Hi, my name is Sam and this is another ProGS tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to go over how to use ProGS to analyze the porosity of a micro CT data set. So some of the problems with this micro CT data set is it has too, it's too big, it has some noise, so we're going to need to apply some filters to take out that noise. And then we're going to actually provide, go and do the porosity analysis. So to start out, we need to load the data set in. So it's a really big data set, so it's hard for me to load the entire thing into my so into Progeos at once. But how you can get around this is you can use the extract subvolume one, and it will extract part of it in. So instead of me loading it and doing it, I already I've loaded and extracted a small subvolume of it just for speed and this is the image set so it's um it's a sub plug and what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to apply some filters onto it and then we'll see where we are so we want to apply the sobo filter a bilateral filter and a median filter so you can do this all by just searching those filters and the uh, filter and workspace and just do sobo filter and all of those so basically let's go over what each of these filters does so we're going to zoom to data main max and there we go. So we can actually see what we're looking at. There we go. So let's look at this. So we're currently, we first want to view the median filter. So this filter doesn't preserve edges that well, as you can see right here, but it groups and it takes away some of the noise. See, if we look at this one, it's extremely noisy. Like there is, there's a bunch of small, just like one pixel segments that are different color. So if we look at that median filter again, it's all groups. So the bilateral filter is similar to the median filter, except it preserves more edges and it's very, it's much more accurate on the edges. And then the Sobel filter just basically does edges and that's it. That's all it does. See? So the next step is we want to see how like we can combine some of these filters to make it better. So I chose to use the bilateral filter and then something called the non-local means filter. So I really like the non-local means filter because it's a GPU based filter, which makes it compute pretty fast. But this also means that if you don't have a much more a powerful GPU, you might just want to use the median filter instead. So, um, now that we have that, you can look and see that there's not as much of this. They're all like in group together. So now it's time to take a look at segmentation. So now we're going to segment this stuff. So as you can see, I, I already segmented it, but we're just going to go over it again. So we're going to create a new label space, label field, and that's fine. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start out very simple with an interactive overlay threshold. And I'm going to zoom in there, zoom to range, and then just like that. And let's zoom in a tiny bit more. And let's try to decide how much to do. So that actually looks pretty good, especially if we use the fill holds method. So let's do that. And then we're going to use something called fill holes just to fill all those extremely small holes. And we're just going to do that. So it's processing and going through all the stack and we'll see how long this will take. It shouldn't take that much longer. And so basically what it's doing is filling up all these small holes that are like connected on different layers. So they're just like small chromatic aberrations. So the next step in this is to, there we go. Okay, so looks like this was a tiny bit too connected. So we're going to go back and just go back to the interactive overlay threshold. And we're going to try some different ways to try to fill in those holes. Zoom to range. So that looks better. And we're going to click apply. That looks good. And we're just going to add that to the inside. So the next step is we're going to do some, um, we're going to dilate it. 
And then we're going to just do a very small dilation, just like that. There we go. Just grow it a tiny bit, and then we're going to shrink it a tiny bit using the erosion. So six and two again, and there we go. Let's see. That looks good, and this exterior looks pretty good, so I'm going to just create a new one and add it to that. And there we go. So now that we have this binary file, which is either not visible or poor space or material. So we're going to go into the poor space stuff. So we're going to go here. So what this is, this is a model of where all the pores are in the model. And uh, then to do this, you just go to generate poor network model and just search that here. Um, and then just to calculate the porosity, we're just going to do that and we're going to select the input image and we're just going to click apply and that will calculate the porosity and if you can find all the pore space analysis. So we can do more of the, in the next episode, next part in the series, we're going to go more into what each of these functions does specifically in Pergeos. And I hope you like this. Um, please like, subscribe if you want to get notified when the next time we launch another episode. And thanks so much for watching.